don't you know? That's the sound of the man. Get back. Working on the chain. One more. Hey, yeah. What is up, blockchain gang? What can I say about Alluvium PvP? For starters, almost none of this is going to be good. I only mention that because I know a bunch of down bad Debbies are going to instantly dislike this video who expected this launch to gain mass adoption so they can retire and or prevent the bank from foreclosing on their houses. I don't have any ill will towards this game, the developers, or its fans, but for it to succeed in today's competitive video game market, it's going to have to innovate while still capturing the attention of their target audience. It is in this last part that concerns me the most, but we will get into all of this on the Power Hour, where I examine the first hour with the Web3 game to help you determine if it is worth your time while giving feedback to the team to hopefully improve the overall user experience. I downloaded the game and installed it using the Epic Game Store and could not use my Epic account to play the game. I don't want to keep any more of my private information on these game servers than I have to, just to try out a game. The vast majority of games that I play are able to use my Google, Steam, or Epic account as valid login credentials, but I made the mistake of creating an account by connecting my wallet, which means that I still couldn't play the game as I had to also register an email address anyway. If that is the case, they should remove the option to sign up with a wallet, verify the email address first, then connect the wallet since this step is optional and a complete waste of time if you just want to try the game out. To be even further annoying, I had to verify my email two separate times, once while entering my email and again while creating my password. It took about 10 minutes to create an account and get into this game, which is about 9 minutes and 50 seconds longer than it should be. There's no real tutorial in this game. You do have the option to watch a 4 minute video tutorial, but I bet over 90% of players skip this and jump right in, which means they're confused as fuck the entire time. I would advise the team to ask the player how familiar they are with this genre of auto battlers. Multiple choice options resulting in three unique user experiences. Returning Alluvium players so they can be updated on any changes from previous patches. Experienced auto battlers so the tutorial focuses on innovation from other games, and finally, the entire new player experience which doesn't have to worry about potential misconceptions from prior patches and previous games in a similar genre. If I were in the room with these three types of players, I would be having very different conversations with them to explain how the game works. One of the largest changes to the core of this genre is competing in 1v1 PvP battles. Traditionally, this is a game of 8 players, and you can still receive some type of reduced reward for coming in second or third place. Since you are only focused on facing a single team, battles will become rather repetitive and predictable when compared to the Royal Rumble style that players are accustomed to. Instead of having a shared pool of alluvials to choose from, players arrive with pre-built decks consisting of alluvials, items, and ranger upgrades. The randomly generated items players get at the start of a match and after two waves are shared, however, and players compete in a bidding minigame. I have no problem with this innovation except that sometimes items that generate classes or affinities would appear that neither player are using. This means that it was obvious nobody would need them and reduce the meaningful choices in the game. Other items are so OP the game is practically over if one or the other players acquire them, so each player is forced to have pre-knowledge of these items and waste 75% of their tokens that round in order to ensure the other player doesn't instantly win. The camera movement is a nice touch if you want to focus on the cinematic battle unfolding before you, but it gets old quickly. I would much rather prefer if the UI focused on damage dealt by each unique alluvial while the match was playing, or at least show a battle report at the end. This info can be found by changing the UI for the class and affinity panel, but it is not available as a default. The controls for the camera feel sort of clunky. They should probably start with a slower movement and gradually accelerate over a few seconds so that panning feels smoother and more precise when micro adjustments are needed. Since the outcome of the battles are predetermined as soon as they begin, you will not be able to alter the outcome by adding items as the battle is taking place. Often when playing TFT, I would get surprised by a change in the enemy team composition and feel rewarded by increasing the power of a unit with an item 
tied him and won the match because of my quick and decisive reaction. Once these matches begin, you can't have any effect on them since they have to play out according to the script no matter what happens, just like in professional wrestling. This is why you will notice alluvials will sometimes behave oddly, such as twitching targets before the one they are attacking is dead or dying while performing an Omega move and the move going off anyway. This didn't ruin the experience for me as I had anticipated, but it is a lot to sacrifice for the sake of having a replay system in my opinion. I don't expect the team to change anything about this now as it is far too late, I just think it was a poor design choice for a 1v1 PvP arena. And this is what I mean by changing up too much of the genre, with pre-built decks, limited opponents, RNG items over alluvials, and deterministic battle results, I don't know how many fans of the auto battle or genre this game is going to appeal to. My only optimism for the game is that they're going to cater more to the RPG Pokemon style crowd and catching and raising the alluvials in the overworld in the first place and this arena mode is simply going to be something to do while you are waiting for more chances to play that game. I would suggest they change how the play clock works to a similar system to online poker. Once an opponent readies up a clock should begin to count down. This player may have 60 seconds in this clock or so for the entire match so making quick decisions would be part of your strategy. I would often have way too much time between rounds unless I needed to move my units or make a large change, then I would never seem to have enough time. After my first impressions on balance, it felt as if the items were far too strong. Positioning made more of a difference than it should have and class bonuses or affinities made almost no difference. When you upgrade a team synergy, it should feel a dramatic difference in overall team power, but it was hard to tell the difference in most cases. It should be like poker where even the highest two pair, for example aces and kings, is beaten by the lowest three of a kind, deuces. However, I would frequently get beat by teams I had outnumbered, out-synergized with stronger alluvials because they had a single additional item equipped. When I developed battle poker with my kids to teach players how to play poker, it also had an auto battle element, but it was never possible for an inferior team comp to beat a superior one as this would be upsetting to players in testing. As a standalone representation of an auto battler, I don't think this game has what it takes, but I can see it succeeding as a companion game to a much larger metaverse. However, only time will tell if all of these worlds will ever come together in a cohesive cohesive experience that attracts and retains new players to the MMORPTCPABG genre, or Massive Multiplayer Role-Playing Trading Card Pokemon Auto Battler Game Genre. Thank you for watching, my name's Danny Draghi, and I hope you enjoyed this Power Hour with Alluvium PvP Arena. Yeah, Mr. Laser! Here it comes. Here it comes. You will be destroyed. You're going down. The explosion will be of extraordinary magnitude. Just hang on. It takes a while.